I'm John Scott. Welcome to this Fox News special report on the landing of the shuttle Discovery. 17 minutes away now from the shuttle landing. Joining me, special correspondent and former astronaut from Gemini 7, 12, and Apollo 13 and 8, Jim Lovell. Also joining us, current NASA astronaut Winston Scott. We are uh, oh, less than 20 minutes now away from the shuttle's landing. We will be watching the entry, uh, the landing, I should say, and the return of legendary astronaut John Glenn. Let's take a look at where the shuttle is right now. NASA has very graciously provided a, us with graphics. This is the flight path that the shuttle will take uh, there. You see crossing over the southern coast of the U.S. and uh, uh, clipping over just a bit of the Gulf of Mexico before it uh, comes across Florida makes a final circle, right, That's uh, Winston? Correct. A circle That's above correct. the landing area here, and then on into landing at the Kennedy Space Center. Let's take a listen to what NASA is telling the shuttle astronauts at this moment. Discovery now at a speed uh, Mach 15 and a half, 10,600 miles per hour. Altitude now 36 miles. Distance from the Kennedy Space Center, 821 miles with just 14 and a half minutes left until touchdown on runway 33. Winston, we heard it there, 10,600 miles an hour, but only 36 miles up. They are screaming. No, but 36 miles is a long ways up, though, and you're absolutely right. They're making tracks. Long way to fall. No it's a long it. glide. <laughs> A jetliner, we know, has all sorts of generators and so forth to power the control surfaces, the wings and the tail. What kind of power supply does the shuttle have in order to, to make those surfaces move? The surfaces are moved by hydraulic power, but the hydraulic power comes from three auxiliary power units. They, they are totally self-contained uh, on board the space shuttle. There has been some concern throughout the morning that the shuttle might not be able to land here at uh, the Kennedy Space Center because of crosswinds that are right on the edge of what NASA finds acceptable, 15 knots, a little under 20 miles an hour but NASA checked everything out and decided that things are good, and so the shuttle will be coming in 14 minutes from now. You can see the flags there indicating just the kind of crosswinds that we are experiencing. Let's go to Trace Gallagher in Houston for a look at what's happening there at the Johnson Space Center. Trace? They are preparing all guns going here, John, waiting for the final minutes for John Glenn's return home. Of course, we are a ways away from the landing, but everybody here is the technicians. You can see the people who worked with John Glenn over the six months that he trained all, of course, in the offices, waiting to see John Glenn touch down. You, of course, spent many years in Florida, John, as did I. We heard the sonic boom come over many times. They will hear that in a few minutes. Now, as they conclude their 134 orbits in nine days in space, we were struck by how close this crew really got. Pedro Duque uh, was nicknamed Juan Glenn. Chiaki Mukai, John Glenn nicknamed her Miss Nuclear Energy. And of course, he nicknamed Scott Parazinski, Dr. Dracula. He was the one drawing John Glenn's blood throughout the entire mission. So this crew comes down nine days later, an extremely tight-knit crew. And of course, they will spend a few more hours on board getting checked out by the doctors. But we're all anticipating John Glenn's arrival home in just a few minutes. John? We're all looking forward to that, Trace. Thanks very much. Juliet Huddy is joining us here at the landing site. She's alongside the runway. Juliet, give us an update. Well, obviously, the wait is almost over. The feeling definitely is electric here, not just among the media. Chris, I don't know if you can pan over there, but you can also see some flags over there. That's the VIP area that will have family and friends and, and all sorts of people from NASA and the government, everybody who's interested in seeing these shuttle folks arrive. Now, there were some concerns, of course, about the weather being a problem, specifically the winds, uh, but the landing here at Kennedy Space Center, of course, is a go. Landing time 12.04, just a little over 10 minutes from now. The space shuttle Discovery will be arriving on this runway, runway 33 that you see right there behind me. Uh, it is a three-mile long runway. It will be landing at a speed of about 225 miles miles per hour and you can notice maybe the emergency vehicles over there they are just there for safety of course officials from NASA expect a very smooth landing here on runway 33 John all right Juliet thanks very much once again we are pleased to have with us Winston Scott a veteran of two NASA shuttle flights Winston Kurt Brown the commander of this mission is one of the true veterans this is his sixth shuttle flight 
And if there were a, a, a guy to be flying this thing on the way in, uh, Kurt Brown is the guy that John Glenn wants to have in the in the commander's seat. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Uh, Kurt's aviation experience goes a long way back to the Air Force, then test pilot school, and now NASA, and he's an incredible pilot. You don't think that John would say, uh, Kurt, can I just try it a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure John probably gets the opportunity to do that during some on-orbit uh, flying. I would I suspect that happened. Doing. Oh, sure thing. <laughs> Let's take a listen at uh, what NASA is the shuttle astronauts about as they come in now, oh, less than uh, 12 minutes away from landing. Again, there is is a pause in the communication with in. the shuttle. Roger, take tack ends. Discovery now traveling at seven yeah, times well. the speed of sound, Mach 7, 4,800 miles per hour. Altitude is now just 26 and a half miles, continuing to track toward the landing site. Distance still 250 miles away with nine minutes, 50 seconds remaining before touchdown. The tack ends are ground-based navigation systems. They just incorporated the that navigation data into those the, the onboard computers. Stations into the and they have dropped, just in the last couple of minutes, they've dropped about uh, 10 miles and about 2,000 miles an hour, by yes. my calculation. Yes, and they still got quite a drop to go from Mach uh, 7 or so all the way down to uh, landing speed. Now, Jim Lovell, uh, on your re-entries in those capsules, you lost radio communication. That happens to the shuttle, too, doesn't it, Winston? It sure does, but it happened much earlier in the re-entry profile. Just after the deorbit burn, there's a 15, 20-minute period or so when we lose comm. Because because the radio waves simply can't penetrate that uh, that shock wave, I guess. Exactly. We've lost the satellite because of where we are, and then the same thing with the radio waves from the uh, ground. We don't have a direct line of sight to the shuttle. So. It's not just the ionization of the gases coming off like it was on the uh, Apollo. It's both the ionization and the location of and where location. you are. Yeah, that's right. And again, tell us... Tell us, Winston, what the astronauts are doing right now. Are they are they extremely busy? Are the pilot and commander busy and everyone else is along for the, the, for the ride? The pace begins to quicken the closer you get. I can guess now they're probably around Mach 5. Scott Karazinski will deploy the air data probes. Now we start to take in real airspeed data. We'll have to evaluate that data, incorporate it into the navigation system, and there are a few other tasks that will accelerate until they get to the runway. Are, are we still in a computer control? We're still in computer control at this point. Let's listen in to, uh, again, the voices of NASA as they communicate with the crew of the Space Shuttle Discovery. Landing now nine minutes away here at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. Incorporate those into the navigation equipment and uh, continue to uh, approach the heading alignment circle at the, at the Cape. Right now, the commander and the pilot are reviewing their last uh, data that they received from the CAPCOM on the wind conditions. And, uh, and preparing for any small changes they might need to make for their uh, final approach. So even though, Winston, it is under computer control right now, the commander, Kurt Brown, has to be ready uh, to take over the operation of the aircraft once they get down to the speed of sound, Mach 1. That is correct. And I might point out, though, there is a manual capability right now. If there were a malfunction of some kind, Kurt Brown could take over right now and fly the vehicle if he had to. And so he's being constantly updated on the weather. Constantly updating on the weather. That's right. They're constantly updating the navigation system. That's extremely important, Discovery as you can imagine.